the talented technician Marlus Kunin for the 145 pound women's title. Now let's go to Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen from the Bank Atlantic Center, the time has come for the co-main event of the evening, World Class Women's MMA in this Strike Force World Championship attraction. She is now the Strike Force Women's World Champion, Chris Cyborg. Growing up, I was too aggressive for other sports. MMA fits my style physically and mentally. I'm quite strong for a girl. I never knew that until I started fighting and I found out I was stronger than guys. Uh, Cyborg is considered the best uh, female fighter in the world. And if I beat her, I'm considered the best. Her ground game is very good, so I'm working extra hard on my submission defense. Tap out! Just like that! With Cyborg, it's really uh, an all-out war, you know? The cage is my world, and I'm prepared for anything. I don't really care about how good she is and how strong she is and what she can do. I know what I can do. I like the pressure. It makes me aggressive. I really want to take her on standing. I want to knock her out. When it's over, her mom will be crying. Marlis Kunin may not be well known in North America yet, but she is beginning her second decade in the sport. Please welcome to the cage, women's MMA international star, Marlis Kunin. She took up female mixed martial arts training many, many years before it was in vogue. In fact, she began training with her current coach, Martin De Jong, when she was just 14. She began her MMA career in Japan in 2000 at the age of 19, reeled off eight straight wins to begin her career. She made her strike force debut in her last fight and earned tonight's title shot with a first round armbar submission win over Roxanne Montaferri, who had beaten Kunin via razor thin split decision a couple of years back. But really, even though she comes from the Golden Glory camp and all those famed strikers. Here's a woman who early in her career was being called the female Hickson Gracie. That's some heady stuff. Well, yeah, I mean, to be called that, that means you're a towering grappler, but she's got so much more in her tool chest. Marluce Coonan has been extremely calm and collected when fielding the opinions that she's the underdog in this fight. Some are shocked to hear her coolly say that Cyborg, Cyborg will be surprised at Coonan's power. As a matter of fact, staying cool is an asset in this fight, and that will come into hand and get this fight into the later rounds. Well, the other asset that's gonna be a big, big key to this fight is gonna be her left hook. Right hand, left hook combination. That's been her bread and butter. She knocks girls to the mat, and then she jumps on them and finishes them with her submission of belly. You know, a lot of people thought when Gina Carano suffered her first pro loss against this woman, Chris Cyborg, last August, that it would spell the death of female MMA. But thanks to her exciting fighting style, Chris Cyborg has created a fan base of her own. And now, here is women's MMA powerhouse, Chris Cyborg. After losing her debut, she has reeled off eight straight wins. Four of them have come inside the distance, all via form of knockout, including her last win. A dramatic last second first round stoppage win over the person who many people call the female face of MMA, Gina Carano. Tonight, Chris Cyborg enters the cage, the Strike Force Women's 145 pound champion. And it's hard for Chris Cyborg's opponents to not be intimidated after they've seen her fight. Chris has been a non-stop blizzard of fistic dominance since she entered the Strike Force universe. But she is, she's a physical powerhouse who, partly athletic and then partly just aggression overwhelms her opponent. I think her real key to winning tonight is her bread and butter from all of her fights. It's her big straight right hand. She lands that punch. I think she can change this, the momentum of this fight with one punch. That is the power of our champion, Christian Cyborg. All right, here's the tail of the tape for this Distaff Division title tilt. 
Alaska. Girls are real equal here. Now, Conan's a little bit lighter. She's 143 and a quarter. And what doesn't show on here is Conan has been a pro for 10 solid years straight. All right, now with the official introductions for this Strikeforce women's title fight, here's Jimmy Lennon Jr. All right, fans, here we go as Strikeforce and Showtime present five five-minute rounds for the Strikeforce Women's Lightweight Championship of the World. Introducing to you first the challenger on my left, fighting out of the blue corner. A submission specialist with a background in Shuto. Her record stands at 17 wins and three losses with 12 of her wins coming by way of submission. From Amsterdam, please welcome the former Remix World Cup and European Abu Dhabi champion, the women's MMA pioneer, Marlou Spoonen. Let's look it up, the clock. Uh, Her opponent across the cage, the defending champion fighting out of the red corner. Raised in the disciplines of Muay Thai uh, and uh, Jiu-Jitsu, her record includes eight wins and one loss, with six of her wins coming by way of knockout. From Curitiba, Brazil, please welcome the Brazilian live wire, the Strike Force World Lightweight Champion, known as the Muay Thai Machine, introducing Chris Cyborg. And referee in charge now to give instructions, George Ortiz. Hello, it's all you. Come over here, over here, please. Over here. Over here. Okay. Come over here. Okay, we're clear on the rules. All right. Obey my commands. Touch gloves. Good luck to both of you. Back it up. 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 Always exciting, the ladies getting ready for this championship bout. And while the talk has been about their striking prowess, Cyborg's lone defeat was via submission. And for Kunin, 12 of her wins have come on the ground. We are set five five-minute rounds for the Strike Force Women's 145-pound championship. And no feeling out process. The ladies already living up to the billing. Right into that. I think this fa a position favors Conan. If she can get that leg trip and get this match to the ground. Then go to the fence. Both of them jockeying for position along the fence in the Greco Roman clinch. Conan, taller, has the longer reach. Looking to now dominate in the over under here. Cyborg needs to pull away, gauge the distance so she can start with her ferocious striking. Oh, and Conan just misses. Conan right down the pipe with that right hand. Great counter right by Conan. And now Cyborg swarming Conan wants to close the distance early. advantageous for Conan. I think it is, and also, Cyborg spent a lot of energy getting that takedown. It wasn't a very technical takedown, but she got it to the ground. Cyborg moves Conan to the fence, working from Conan's guard. Conan's got the open guard using that foot on the fence to turn her hips and to get ready for an arm bar. Seven of Conan's wins have been via arm bar. Cyborg steps out of that and drops a right hand. Conan absorbs it, a minute and a half gone here, and now Cyborg looking to pass guard does so. Back down to the close guard. Short hammer fist delivered by the champion. Conan has such a tricky guard, it looked like she was gonna get side mounted, then boom, she's right back into the close guard. Now, game dropping from long range. Here's Cyborg where she's at her most dangerous dropping those right-handed missiles. Conan's got to get her hat out of the cage. That, that, her head being up against the cage is just a target there for Cyborg to tee off on. And the only way she can fire back when Cyborg postures up that high is with the up kick. And now Cyborg drops Conan on her head and again looking to pass. Conan in the butt scoot position. Cyborg now it would be in her best interest to just let her back up. But goes down and that's taking a page from uh, our former teammate at Shooter Box, Maurice 
Mauricio Shogun Hua. Kamalim's got to hold off on some of these holds. Maybe she used it to create momentum and space so she can get to her feet. But going for the holds right now when Cyborg is so strong. Stra Up kick by Kunin. Cyborg smiles as if to say, oh, really? You want to play that game, do you? And I think the fans want them back on their feet. Asking he shall receive. Kick. And now Cyborg, one of her weak. If you call it a weakness, she can sometimes be one. She can, and there's that right hand again by Kunin. And Cyborg, though, opening up. This is not where Kunin wants to be. Kunin's got to either move that head or drop the level, otherwise she's going to get hit with that left hook again. And she stopped kicking. She stopped using that front leg for distance. And great counter by Cyborg, really timing the kicks now of Marlos Kunin. Circling in the middle of the cage. Cyborg with a thigh kick of her own. Kunin should really drop down low and then fire that right hand up. I agree with you, Steven. She's standing too high. Oh, it's tagged again. Now she drops a level, but Cyborg stands her right back up. Looking for the trip is Kunin. Back Cyborg to the fence. Double underhooks for Kunin. Cyborg gets one underhook, but she's still got her back to the fence. Final minute of the opening round. Cyborg taking a breather. Kunin, short knee to the quadriceps. Now looking for the foot stop. Oh, okay. Maybe doesn't like her color of nail polish. Just drops another one. <laughs> 40 seconds now remaining in this first round, and now it's Cyborg. Her turn to deliver some knee strikes. A lot of people didn't think this was going to make it out of the first round, but Kunin will be the better for that. Oh, and there's a level trajectory elbow by Kunin that just misses. Cyborg unwinds, uppercut by Kunin, and then she quickly shies away. And this is where you have to respect the power of Chris Cyborg. Give Kunin courage marks, but I don't know if it's that smart. Say what she will about wanting to strike with Cyborg. Her best bet is to take this to the ground. Strikeforce Women's 145-pound championship is in the books. Well, it took no time to get this match to the ground, and it started with this clinch position. At Cyborg, with her patented, just kind of trip you, throw you, maul you to the mat, and then beat you a little bit. Very effective for her. Got him. Well, Kunin started the stand-up striking, but uh, Cyborg was able to come back and back her up, cutting angles, punching up, and digging her with that jab straight down the pipe. That jab is setting up that looping right hand. That's her money shot, and she's banging Kunin all over this cage. Cyborg landed 27 of 54 strikes in that opening round for a 50% clip. Kunin 21 of 38 for 55% success rate. Nice. Good leaping left hook landed by now Kunin. They unload on each uh -oh. other. Kunin finds herself on the back, meets Cyborg with an up kick. Cyborg kicks the back of her leg and now wants to tenderize her limbs in order to soften things up here. Cyborg continues to kick away at Kunin. I have been there, Moral. When someone kicks you on the bottom of your foot with a shin bone, it hurts so bad. Now she stacks up Kunin. Kunin, of course, dangerous from this position. Almost lands on her feet. She almost pulled her back up. Kunin is blocking that kick with her, the sole of her foot, but like you said, Frank, that hurts. That hurts, and that hurts a lot. When she gets up and later on, she tries to dance on those feet, she's gonna feel it. Kunin still on the back, Cyborg now with the cross face. Looks like in a, look at the pass guard now, back to the close guard of Marlos Kunin and talking to Kunin's trainer, Martin de Jong, he said that they were gonna surprise Cyborg and pressuring the Brazilian bomber, the Muay Thai machine, but so far, Cyborg, 
has been able to control the tempo and uh, just nullifying Kunin on the ground right now. And this is really where Kunin needs to work. Shrimp her hips, as you said, Steve. Get more active. Keep her on the floor, play the game for a while, get her into the third round, test her gas tank, and then test her submission defense. That's another yeah. question mark, Frank, yeah. is the gas tank, the cardio of Chris Cyborg. She's a physical specimen, but again, as we talked about before, muscles need oxygen. Well, and her uh, frenetic pace is amazing. And a lot of the techniques she used aren't exactly perfect. There are a little bit of muscle attached to the technique. But she gets by with some things because she's so strong. But Chris Cyborg has been very patient in her metting out the damage in this fight so far. She didn't go out there and waste a lot of punches in the first round. She, she connected with some, but then she didn't jump in there and get reckless. Heading into this contest, Cyborg had outlanded her last three opponents, 165 to 40 in total strikes, according to CompuStrike. She's landed 61% of her total strikes in her career and now continues to rack up the points with the strikes with Kunin on the ground. Referee Ortiz allowing this. Let's get them back on their feet. Midway through the second stanza. The problem Kunin is having is she trying the answer the phone defense only, no head movement yep. with the punching exchanges. Yeah, she's got to pump first and she's got to create movement with that strike, with that jab, or with that feint, or with that shoulder dip. Kunin saying that size would not be a factor in this fight. She's fought at 135, says 145 is, is a good weight for her. The strength obviously lies with Cyborg. Cyborg with some head movement, nice body kick. Very good body kick. Left kick right to the body. Less than two minutes remaining now in round two. Conan's best punch is that right hand, but yep. she doesn't throw it with combinations with left, right, left hook or and anything. And Cyborg really beginning to find her tempo. Wow, just jab. And there's Conan coming back with a right, but is met with a straight left. Now she drops levels, looking for the takedown. Nice defense exhibited by Cyborg into the clinch. Well done. Very well done. Conan jumping guard. Half a butterfly guard. Now into the close guard, a minute and a half remaining. And even though we would think there, it looks like she was transitioning, looking maybe for the arm, but so far, Cyborg submission avoidance, really a major factor again, pulls out, says no. You come back up to my domain, please. Cyborg is really good at instinctively knowing the distance to stay in the guard, whether it be too low, medium, or high all the way out of guard. Now she's playing a very anti-jujitsu game. She's making enough angles so she doesn't get caught in hold. You would never guess she's from shooter box, right? <laughs> Purple button jujitsu, though. Although she's more uh, interested in making her opponent's skin a deeper shade of purple than the uh, purple belt that she wears in Brazilian jiu-jitsu. I don't think she's interested in that whatsoever in this fight. She wants to continue to make her mark as the pound for pound toughest fighter on the planet when it comes to the ladies. It's a nice little combination. Kick, kick, punch. Wow. Anti-jujitsu is correct, Moro. Keeping that base wide enough to where she can't be rolled. And that fence action, driving her in the fence. Kunin's head there, being trapped, is a target to get punched. Again, Cyborg stacking Kunin up. Wide base. 15 seconds now left in the round. Cyborg wanting to send a message to the judges here. Those jackhammer shots in there as the warning goes to let the fighters know now. 10 seconds left. Left end, another round that belongs to the champion. Do you agree, Frank? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Cyborg running away with this match so far. It started with a takedown. It started with a, some crazy punches that I thought maybe hurt Coonan for a second. She looked like she slipped. But uh, she recovered nicely, was doing some up kicks, was controlling the range. She wasn't hurt the way she didn't know what was going on, but she was on her back. The ref staying tight. And Kunin with a strange block, just kind of lifting her elbows up, more of a, a tie block there. And then what power Cyborg has, she literally lifted Kunin off the ground. And Cyborg with the fantastic defense on this double leg takedown. Look at that sprawl, hips out. Arms inside with her own clinch. She was in position now to get her own takedown. And Conan just gives it up. Hey, don't forget for breaking news and live updates on everything Showtime Sports. Follow us on Twitter.com slash SHO Sports.
Third round of this Strikeforce Women's 145-pound championship underway here at the Bank Atlantic Center, Sunrise, Florida. And Cyborg, so far, methodically picking apart Marlus Kunin. There's a nice outside leg kick by Kunin. Drops a level, but can't get the shoot. And Cyborg, here's perseverance by Kunin. Just drives Cyborg into the fence, but still unable to get her down to the ground. Well, that single leg trip is a tough takedown because you need forward energy. So if your opponent comes against you, a lot of times you lose that forward power. What would you like to see Kunin do differently here in round three, Stephen? I, I think Kunin should try to get Chris's head down, go for a guillotine, jump in the guard. She's got to try something else because what she's doing right now is not working. Even though she's not taking as much damage as she could because her ground defense is good enough, she's still losing this fight 0 to 2 so far with the rounds. Yeah, and I thought she was, I thought Kunin was doing really well in the tie clinch. I thought she was doing more damage and actually coming out better on those Cyborg exchanges. Cyborg unleashing now on Kunin. Punches and kicks, and Kunin now backing away, finally goes again for the takedown, but the power of Cyborg just slams her to the mat. She is having none of that, and really Cyborg's size and strength beginning to play a factor here. A nice body shot delivered by the champion, and now continuous shots to the body of Marlis Kunin. Mar, you said it, it's the power, because the jiu-jitsu, well, it's not a jiu-jitsu match, it's a, it's a MMA match. And the power of Chris Cyborg and her cardio, which we question, a lot of people question that, what's gonna happen after the first, second round. Here we are in the third round, and Cyborg looks as fresh as ever. And it will be interesting to see what happens should this go to the championship rounds, because you're right, so far Cyborg doing a very good job of just making everything count, controlling, Kunin and really just frustrating the Dutch fighter. Kunin had a lot of pride in her plans to stand up with uh, Cyborg, but I think those have been pretty much shut down. Mm -hmm. And we're going back to her strength, that uh, female Hicks and Gracie thing that couldn't have been more true. You always revert, Frank, don't you? Yep. Back to what got you there in the first place. Yes, sir. Ring that bell, you go back to what you know. Well, and we saw earlier tonight in that middleweight fight between Robbie Lawler and Melvin Manhoek how one-sided a fight can be, but then just like that, the tables can turn. And for Marlos Kunin, she needs to see some sunshine peek through that window because right now, this female champion from Brazil is casting an ominous shadow. She's sneaking that right leg up. But you're right, Cyborg is pushing that guard up. She's staying right in the middle of position, so her arms aren't vulnerable, so her head's not vulnerable. And now, right hands from a distance. Conan just swivels. And really, I think she's right now at a loss. She's frustrated, discombobulated. Oh, but there, as we mentioned, pops back up as Cyborg goes down momentarily. And the funny thing is both these women, there's a hurricane kick by Cyborg just outside of Miami, home of the Hurricanes. And you know, both these women train with men at their respective camps because, well, frankly, they're just too tough for most of the ladies in their area. And now, ground and pound from Cyborg. One good thing we saw from Conan, now she's getting beat up. Shelling up now, and Cyborg looking to finish it here in round three, a minute and a half. Referee imploring Conan to do something before stops this fight. It's Cyborg, Cyborg on the cusp Cyborg. of defending her title. That's and it. it's over. Oh. Cyborg remains champion. Wow. That's a big statement because Marlos Kunin is a really, really good fighter. And she completely dominated her on the ground. Tomorrow, she is unstoppable. Who does she fight next? Who do we have for this machine that is Cyborg? Well, after a performance like that, who would want to sign up? But I can tell you that Erin Tohill, another female MMA pioneer, a member of the Strike Force roster, she definitely watching with vested interest. And again, a woman who has been around for a long time. But for Chris Cyborg right now, I mean, wow, she is a, she's amazing. People had questions about her cardio. Those questions were answered by this performance. And how? Recording her seventh TKO victory for Marlis Kunin. Back to the drawing board.
Fez muito bem o dever de casa, menino. Muito bem. Tu é foda. Well, Conan was certainly a game fighter, and she literally tried everything in her arsenal from up kicks to heel kicks to leg trips. I mean, she really pulled out every technical thing she could to try to beat Christiane Cyborg. But she, Cyborg is just far too strong. The firepower, the ability to sustain a punch. That was a massive punch. Christiane shakes it off like it was nothing. And here in the end, it's just way too much Cyborg. Just, just the position of power, the ability to strike down. This is how Gina Carano was taken out. This is how she's taken out every other girl in the women's division. You know what? If I were Marlos Kunin, I might want to consider going back to 135. There's another tournament coming up for Strike Force. Uh, Sarah Kaufman, yep. Takeo Hashi going to vie for the first title. I think she's best served to 135 because Chris Cyborg has proven that she is the lady to beat at 145. All right, here is the official decision now from Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time of three minutes, 40 seconds in round number three. Our referee in charge, George Ortiz, stops the contest due to strikes. She is the winner by way of technical knockout. She is still the Strike Force World Women's Lightweight Champion, Chris Cyborg. Ah! Here's the fight professor standing by with the champ. Okay, Chris, how excited are you about this victory? Como é que você tá? Tá excitada sobre essa vitória? Tô muito feliz, treinei muito, me preparei muito e I'm very happy. I prepared myself very much. I trained a lot. Now, she gave you quite a stare down at the weigh-ins. How did that affect you? Did that motivate you at all? Ela apanhou bastante. Isso te motivou bastante? Motivou que eu pude mostrar um pouco mais de mim. It motivated me. It motivated me a lot because I could show myself a little more. Was she the toughest fighter that you've ever faced? Ela é a maior lutadora que você já pegou até agora? Acho que sim. I, I think so. Why? Por quê? Ela tinha um, carne, um, um, um bom cartel de luta e acredito também que ela tem bastante coração e admirei muito com ela na pesagem. Acredito que o MMA feminino precisa disso. Because she's got a lot of game in her, she has a lot of techniques and she's got a great heart. And I've, I've admired her from the way in and she, MMA has a lot to get from her. Chris, congratulations, a fantastic victory. And, uh, Good luck to you. Let's hear it one more time, Chris Cyborg. And now let's throw it down to Jen Brown. Thanks.